Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Oh, you're not tiny? You're big? Well, come on down, big friends. Today, I'm joined by my guest, a very good friend of mine, Cassandra the Caterpillar. Cassandra has laryngitis this week, so she probably won't say much, but she's very excited to hear this week's story, and I hope you are too. Cassandra, are you ready? (laughs) I'm getting about 30 thumbs up right now from Cassandra. Can I see your thumbs up too? All right. Now remember, since there are no pictures, you get to imagine everything in your mind. As you listen, think about what Ruby's curious pebbles might look like. Do they have stripes? Spots? Are they blue? Are they purple? What about the caterpillars she finds? Are they smooth or spiky? You can imagine it however you want. Okay, let's listen to our story, Ruby Takes Her Time. Here we go. While her brother Howard raced down the sidewalk, Ruby took her time. She stopped for each dandelion, worm, and rock as she hummed or said a rhyme. Come on, Ruby, Howard said as if he had no time to spare. Ruby glanced up, then back at the ground, saying, Oh, Howard, I'll be right there. As she walked along, she found curious pebbles, fuzzy moss, and caterpillars galore. She sometimes thought of moving on, but what if there was more? When she finally reached the playground, her pockets heavy with everything she'd found, Howard just said, you took long enough, and never asked to see her stuff. Well, one day all that changed for good. It was a summer afternoon. Ruby was examining a small piece of wood and softly humming a little tune. Ruby heard a tiny mew just as Howard whizzed by her shoulder. Howard, did you hear that too? No, he groaned. He thinks he knows everything because he's older. There it was again. Mew, mew, mew. What was it? Ruby thought she knew. She looked behind a large oak tree, shielding her eyes from the bright sunlight. There, a kitten. Oh, not one, but three. Howard, look what I found, Ruby called, but he was already out of sight. The little cats gazed up at Ruby, their tiny limbs looking weak. One of the kittens ambled over and nuzzled Ruby's hand with its cheek. Where's your mother? Ruby wondered aloud, cradling her new buddy. But the kitten just looked up at her, his fur matted and muddy. I can tell you're hungry, Ruby said. She was on a mission now. These cats needed to be fed. She gathered the kittens up in her arms and started walking quickly. She couldn't stop for caterpillars or sticks. These cats were sickly. As she lumbered past the playground, Howard glanced Ruby's way. He saw something furry in her grasp, and for once, he didn't look away. What's that you have there, Ruby? What is that furry thing? But Ruby was on a mission and she couldn't stop for anything. Behind her, Howard leapt off his swing. Howard finally reached home, gasping out of air. How'd you get here so fast, Ruby, like you had no time to spare? Howard, these kittens need to be fed. They need water. They need love. They need a warm bed. Kittens, Howard exclaimed, finally seeing what she'd found. You found these? Yes, behind a tree. They were making tiny sounds. I'd ask you if you'd like to hold one, but I'm sure you have better things to do. Oh, Howard said, I mean, of course I do, but I could spare a moment if you really want me to. Ruby smirked to herself as she handed a kitten to her brother. Howard's supposed plans vanished and they spent the day with one another. Their parents agreed to let them keep the littlest one, whom they named Peep. The other two they gave away to their friend Carlos and to their neighbor, Mrs. Holloway. They took turns feeding Peep and taking her to the vet. She was their constant companion, a loving little pet. Now, whenever they went out, Howard still raced down the sidewalk, and Ruby still stopped for each dandelion, worm, and rock. 
But when Ruby finally reached the playground, her pockets heavy with everything she found, Howard would run to greet her, asking, What did you find today? He'd look at each stone, admire each bug, and then together they'd play. Well, Cassandra, how'd you like this story? Whoa, whoa, oh my gosh, Cassandra, I can't give that many high fives at once. I think she enjoyed it, and I really hope you did too. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Little Stories for Tiny People. If you enjoyed this story, please subscribe to our podcast in iTunes and leave a review. Special thanks go out to Omar the Owl for flying in a glass of water and some carrots. Mm Mm-mm, carrots. We'll be back in two weeks with a brand new story.